Yo, what is going on homies? It's your boy Stumped back for another OPTC video and in today's video, the new treasure map against Luffy and Ace has just arrived over here on the global side of the game and we're going to be testing those teams that I had put together in the uh, prep video to see how they go at stage one and uh, see how they perform. So let's dive in. Unfortunately, today I am at work and I am at working for like another five hours after the treasure map's release which means that I am going to be struggling to sort of get out the GARPS challenge videos, but don't stress when I get home. I will be working on those. I'm going to try and put together like two teams. So if you are watching this and you are looking for some GARP challenge help, there is already videos on the channel for the new Hody, but it does use the new legends that have released on JP. So stuff like the Law, the Kid, a Kainu, uh, sorry, not Kainu, Luffy, Whitebeard and Verse Shanks and stuff like that. But if you guys want to check out like what the content actually does, make sure to head over to the GARP challenge playlist and that'll help you out. But the main focus of today's video, we are focusing on treasure map. This treasure map is a little bit interesting as uh, Luffy and Ace is actually a pretty good character. And me, myself, I'm actually pretty keen for Luffy and Ace. So hopefully it's not too much of a grind. And the idea of these particular teams today is to sort of focus on speed, getting to the final boss, getting to the intrusion and getting the maximum amount of points as well as the maximum amount of gains from those mini boss stages. So we do get the intrusion against Invencob first. And against Ivankov, or Ivankov, I always say that incorrect, or my Australian accent kicks in and it sounds like I'm saying it incorrect. But against Ivankov, Ace is really the best unit to be bringing. Ace is basically built for taking down this particular fight, or this fight was basically built for Ace. So we are going to be looking at using a Kazaru friend captain. This is the team that we did put together, so let's dive in. The beautiful thing about Kazaru is he is a powerhouse shooter. So he works amazingly with both Ace and uh, the Versa Kainu, which is really, really cool. So we're going to, on stage one, we get our quick and our strength characters cooldowns. So make sure you are building teams around that. And then ideally, you want to try and build up the verse meter. But when it comes to Ace, he needs 12 strength decks or quick orbs. And just because, like, there's not too many stages, it is going to be a little bit tricky getting that. So on stage two, we come up against Inizuma. He has threshold. He uh, gives us blindness and uh, gives us despair. So we're going to use the Oniguma special. That is going to do a bunch of damage. Remove the despair. Remove the sound effects. And then we can actually get around the threshold by utilizing our Kuzan special. So utilizing Kuzan special is going to give us an attack boost as well. And with that, we should be able to just tear through this particular stage, even with Kizaru not being a very good captain. Onto the final stage against the boss. And this is where the uh, support of Mr. 3 can actually come in handy because you can actually get the cooldowns as there's only three stages on the intrusion. But we do lose our bottom right unit, so that's why Onigumi's there. He's not boosted under Ace. And we get five turns of Paralysis. So we're going to use the Luffy special. Luffy can remove the Paralysis. Luffy's also going to give us some matching orbs, namely on our Ace, so that way we can get the full uh, effect of his special, giving us an orb boost and a chain lock. And then finally, Kazara is just going to give us an attack boost. And with that, Ace should just absolutely decimate here. Beautiful. Goodbye, Ivankov. And let's move on to the mini boss fights now. All right. So we're over here at the mini bosses. And I did manage to actually pick up the double attack along the way. So this might not be the best showing, but it'll give you guys an idea of how the teams work still. Just be mindful that I do have double attack. So against the first mini boss, we're coming up against Buggy. Now against Buggy, we're actually utilizing Buggy, which is pretty funny, actually. But um, the idea of using Buggy against the first fight is Buggy will dupe drops. And the fact that you can actually use the special of Kid with Buggy actually helps out a lot because that way you can actually get end of turn damage for the next four turns. That means that we can just single tap and that way we take out all of these like um, fodder stages very, very quickly. And using double Buggy means that we're going to get double drops. So if we do get tablets or we get some crystals, I'm in desperate need of limit break materials. So um, getting those um, limit break materials is going to be really nice. Now, I did have the support of Mr. 3 on this team. Now, it's not essential at all. I just thought I might need the cooldowns on my Akainu unit. Akainu is great because he can just, or Akainu Fuji can just blow away the enemy. I wasn't sure how the cooldowns were going to look, but obviously with all the cooldowns that treasure map gives us it's very very nice once we get to the final stage against buggy if you need to you have the hp cut of whitebeard but whitebeard's just here just because you can easily put him on another team but ideally you just want to use the big mom special big mom's just going to insta kill and uh bob's your uncle so that was the buggy fight hopefully we can get some good dupe drops here and if you guys are looking to sort of speed your way through treasure map or we'll make it a little bit easier for yourself the whole buggy strat works really really well and once again shout out to the homie chaozu this is actually i've actually adopted this strat from him um, so that way we can just pick up some more limit break crystals. 
they you always in need of limit break crystals especially if you are limit break keen characters um it's very very handy on to the next fight against croc now against croc i actually managed to pick up jozu so i have included jozu on this particular team he's a recommended character but he's not overly essential but ideally we are using weevil as our captain Weevil's really, really good because he boosts strength characters, which are actually boosted as we have color affinity against Crocodile. And then the rest of the team is sort of just built around speed. Um, the use of Treasure Map Zora is actually really good because you can pop his special off twice. And ideally, you want to use that on turn three, mainly because there's more mob enemies on turn three and turn four compared to the first two stages. And that way, it just makes it so much quicker for you guys. So we're going to use the Zora special one time. We can do a nice cheeky wave clear. Then we can use the Zora special once again. Another cheeky wave clear. And that way we can move on to the boss. Now against the boss, we come up against Croc. Now Croc is going to do a whole bunch of nasty stuff. He gives us a full board of TND slots. He is going to give us five turns of attack down. And he's immune to delay. He also has a death hit. So we want to make sure that we use the Komarasaki special. Komarasaki is going to remove two turns of the attack down and give us damage reduction. We can then use her special again to remove further attack down. And then we have Jozu to remove the rest of it. Now, you just need to replace Jozu. I actually, off the top of my head, I actually cannot remember who I used uh, to get around the attack down in my playthrough video and i'm meant to be using the um aura jackson on this particular team as well not the liberal hind that way we can actually get those tnd orbs matching and that way we have the um orb boost from our weevil unit we had the support of shiki for a little bit more damage not overly essential we also have color affinity with the support of um vv as well but again that's really not that essential as there's not really any free spirit characters on this particular team that actually have color affinity so you don't have to worry about that at all but with that we can take out croc fairly easily just make sure you have the oro jackson on if you guys have the oro jackson that way you can actually make tnd orbs matching and bob's your uncle it works really really well on to the next fight against jimbei though now against jimbei he is a strength unit and we are using a predominantly mono quick team but the way we're getting around or making this actually faster for ourselves is by bringing a friend kaido now bringing a friend kaido even when he's not boosted is like in my opinion it's just very very nice you don't need to bring two kaidos so if you have a way to hybrid up kaido now kaido is not actually getting boosted on this particular team like at all but the beautiful thing about him is, is he boosts powerhouses and strikers which this whole team actually is besides buggy but that buggy is just a placeholder you actually don't need the buggy. He's literally just here because he's a 1.35 times booster. And the rest of the units are actually free to play besides Sengoku. Once again, I've just slapped Sengoku on here as he's just really, really good. Uh, he's a powerhouse unit. He's a, he's a quick unit. And it just works really, really well under both Queen and the big dog that is V1 Kaido. So as you can see, we've got those, that end of turn damage from Kaido just blasting away all of these stages. And the beautiful thing about bringing Kaido against this particular fight... In, or in particular, is Jinbei actually has resilience. So if you are missing Sengoku, you don't actually need to remove the resilience as you have the end of turn damage with Kaido. So Jinbei is going to put up five turns of damage reduction. So we're going to remove that with our Queen special. Queen can also give us some adjacent orbs, which is a little bit nice. We've also got a, a orb boost with our Lucy unit. And then we can rotate those empty orbs with Hannibal. And that way we've got an orb boost. You can even use something like... Um, an attack booster on uh, Queen, something like uh, Smoker should work well if they do damage. I'm not 100% sure. Otherwise, you can just always bring something like the um, the Sheiky support. I thought Queen did damage, but I think you have to take damage for that to work. So you might want to take off Smoker and use something like uh, Sheiky. That should work fine. But otherwise, you don't have an attack boost. And uh, that could be a little bit of a problem. But as you can see, like in the early stages, it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. There's so much damage with this team. And, and then obviously with the end of turn damage from Kaido, we can get around the resilience as well as there are no normal attacks only in Treasure Map. Thank God. Moving on to the final boss fight. We're coming up against the big dog that is uh, Whitebeard. Now against Whitebeard, we are running a mono slasher team. If you guys have super type Zoro, he's um, probably a better leader. But the way that I'm looking at running it is utilizing double Mihawk because you have a 1.35 times booster with Mihawk. And that way we've got some wave clearing shenanigans with our uh, Zoro unit down here as well. We've also got, um, what's his name? Uh, Kinemon on this particular team. Kinemon's really good because he can actually give cooldowns. As you can see, we don't really need the cooldowns per se, but Law's a wave clearer, Zoro's a wave clearer. And once again, I've got Mr. 3 just for, just for cooldowns there. 
Um, but as you can see, you can just use their specials to sort of just auto clear the stages, which works really nicely. Ideally, you want to save one of their specials for this particular stage as this has the most mob enemies. I was just rambling away and uh, got caught up in it all. So uh, unfortunately, use the special a little bit early. So we're just going to tap our way through here. But that way you've got law for wave clearing. You've also got uh, super type Zora. But again, they're just, they're just luxury units. You can easily replace them with other units that are great for wave clearing. But just remember, if you aren't running Mihawk, you need to make sure they're slashes. On the final stage against Whitebeard, he has a perfect barrier. He gives us a full water block orbs as well as paralysis. So literally just utilizing the Kawamatsu special gets around all of these nasty effects. Then we can get an orb boost with our Mihawk special. And with that, we're pretty much good to go. There is no real issues uh, here. We just have to get through that perfect barrier, which is a little bit annoying. But with the Oro Jackson, it, it makes life very, very easy as we can hit our perfect super, super nice. But that's again, Star uh, Wipeid. It's going to work fairly well. Uh, I will probably look at making it a little bit quicker, maybe taking off Kindermon as we actually don't need the special cooldowns at all. Uh, and so I'm probably looking at putting another wave clear or something like that on there. But it's going to work fine. Uh, again, if you can get like a friend super type Zoro, that's another option for some more damage. If you are missing that Choppermon support for the color affinity, you can use his super typing. Uh, find a way to activate that as well moving on to the final boss fight though it is against luffy and ace and against luffy and ace i'm going to try and use kizaru for as long as possible but utilizing a kainu is your best bet here so if you are missing a versa kainu ideally bring a friend captain if you have your own you, you really don't need to until the later stages when that stage four becomes a little bit more problematic on this particular team luffy is actually not getting boosted at all uh, but he's really good because he's a 1.35 times booster. He can remove special bind. He can also remove paralysis. And he gives us some matching orbs as well. But if you are missing that Luffy, you didn't summon on the Akainu Ace Banner for whatever reason, then you can use something like Treasure Map Jinbei is a really, really good shout. Or just another character that can actually remove special bind. I'm pretty sure there's only two characters that are actually boosted when it comes to special bind removal. But Jinbei is really, really nice. On stage four, we come up against Boa. Boa is going to give us a full board of block orbs and special bind us for five turns as well as giving us five turns of chain lock. So utilizing the Luffy special, we can get around the special blinds. And then utilizing the King special, we can actually remove the chain lock. King also gives us an attack boost as long as we hit th uh, 12 hit counters. So ideally, you just want to hit with the characters that, um, well, as you can see, like Boa doesn't have much HP with our color affinity. And we do lock those block orbs, which may seem like a bit of an issue, but it's not going to be a problem whatsoever once we get to the final fight against Luffy and Ace. Luffy and Ace are a strength unit, very similar to their legend. They give us five turns of burn. They have a 12 hit uh, barrier, and it can be a little bit annoying, but we're going to use the, uh, what's his name, the Akainu special. Akainu is going to give us a full body orbs, an orb boost, and a chain lock. We also have the uh, attack boost from King carrying over. We can remove the barrier with Oniguma, but don't even worry about the barrier to be honest with just literally one Akainu you can literally just do this and with barrier pen you're fine um they do have a 3000 burn you don't have to worry about that burn really with the amount of hp that this team has it's not going to be an issue even if you do hit your six perfects but once they do revive they do give you despair okay that's new i did not know about the despair so ideally you actually want to save that oniguma special until the revive that's something that wasn't actually in the notes, so that's good to know. So make sure to save the Oniguma special for the revive. That way you can get around the despair as well as it is four turns of despair. But there you guys go. That was the playthrough video from level one, uh, testing those teams that we did put together in the uh, prep video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did, make sure to go down there and belt the like button for me if you're new to the channel. Hit the big red subscribe button too. But guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, I thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Lights!